Caesar on the cross. Been a long time since I've seen the kind of work you've laid down today. A damn long time. And the screams of those Legion bastards as they kick dirt running east like a choir of angels to my ears. Speaking of, that crazy light show over the fort? What the fuck was that? Some kind of thumb of God you called down? Amazing. Fucking amazing. Could use a hundred of you. Just scatter you over the east like jacks. Give those plum fucks the what for. And, uh, well, <laughs> these, uh, these boys with you? <laughs> Hello there, Smiley. Guess it ain't no secret how you, uh, I say, can you ask them to put their weapons down? It's just reaching in my coat to give you a cigar. Figured as much. Come on, you sons of bitches, we're ready. Over here. You did a super job wrapping things up, and I'm not just saying that because I have to. I didn't want to make a big deal about this until after we won, but... Well, I found some code snippets in one of Mr. House's data banks that will let me, um, reprogram my personality. To be a little more assertive, basically. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And it's going to take me a while, so it'll seem like I'm offline. But don't worry, everything will be okay. I've updated the Securitron's targeting parameters, so they know what to do. Vegas will be protected. So that's where I'll be. Off making a few changes, and I, I guess I'll see you around. We accomplished a lot together. It was fun. Take care. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The courier, with the aid of Yes Man, drove both the Legion and the NCR from Hoover Dam securing New Vegas' independence from both factions. With Mr. House out of the picture, part of the Securitron army was diverted to the Strip to keep order. Any chaos on the streets was ended, quickly. Chaos became uncertainty, then acceptance with minimal loss of life. New Vegas assumed its position as an independent power in the Mojave. Preferring neither the best of the NCR nor the worst of the Legion, the Courier was the man responsible for a truly independent New Vegas. He had removed Mr. House from power over the Strip and broken the influence of the NCR and Caesar's Legion in the Mojave Wasteland. Black Mountain Radio continued to broadcast its peculiar form of propaganda. Raul Tejada faced his execution each day, though pardoned in the end. Travelers venturing too near Black Mountain continue to be harassed by Tabitha's followers. Without organized leadership, the remaining boomers slowly drifted away, leaving Nellis Air Force Base to be flooded by prospectors and scavengers. All of the boomers accumulated knowledge quickly scattered, and their existence slowly faded from memory. Buried beneath tons of rubble, the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel was no more. Those few who were outside the Hidden Valley Bunker when it was destroyed settled into new lives, or headed west to find a new chapter to join. With no clear leader to guide efforts in Freeside, the followers of the Apocalypse lost control of Old Mormon Fort to local thugs and junkies. Eventually, using the followers' remaining supplies to manufacture drugs, the Old Mormon Fort quickly devolved into little more than a junkie den. Travelers continued to stop by Good Springs Source for water on the Long 15, but rarely would anyone venture into the ruins of Good Springs itself. Those who did were almost always tourists, come to visit the graveyard where the courier rose from the dead. After generations of being beaten down, the Great Khans were finally broken by the courier. Those few who avoided the courier's wrath moved north into the wilderness of Idaho, 
where they tried once more to rebuild. With no cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia in sight, the disgruntled Nightkin left Jacobstown. Without a treatment, their insanity grew. The crazed Nightkin terrorized the wasteland, and Jacobstown suffered repeated reprisals from mutant-hating humans. In the end, the surviving mutants abandoned Jacobstown entirely, its existence quickly forgotten by the rest of the wasteland. With the king dead and most of their gang slain by the courier, the remaining kings fled the area, never to be heard from again. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old Lady Gibson. Despite their vigilance against potential attacks by the Legion, the citizens of Novak were no match for the courier. The motel and Dinky the Dinosaur were left vacant, a rare stop at best for travelers along Highway 95. After Hoover Dam, the leaderless powder gangers at the correctional facility vanished into the waste, leaving the prison empty. The correctional facility became another abandoned ruin in the wasteland, its carcass occasionally picked over by enterprising prospectors. With Cook dead, powder gangers in Vault 19 fell apart. Those who weren't destroyed by the courier fled to the hills or attempted to work their way back through the Mojave wasteland. Few survived. Prim, already torn apart by powder gangers, was dealt a killing blow by the courier. Though prospectors pick through the remains of the town from time to time, no one reestablishes it as a settlement. After the death of Chief Hanlon, the power of NCR's rangers was broken for years. Their organization, so reliant on the wisdom and guidance of its elder members, became a shadow of what it once was to people across the wasteland. And so the courier's road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes.